Hi, I'm David Farland, and welcome to Super Writers Tuesday. We have a question today from Jonathan Cohen on YouTube. He asks, what if you have a book that you'd like to get published, and you've gotten editorial feedback, and the editors want you to change something that you would like to keep? Okay, that's an actual problem that a lot of us face as authors, because just about everybody gets asked to make some sort of changes. Sometimes the changes are absolutely insane, it seems. I, I remember one lady, for example, who had a book that was written about a Roman soldier who comes to England in 400 AD and has a romance with a, a local woman. And a number of editors said, you know, we would be able to sell so many more copies if you would just change him to a French soldier in 1800. Well, that really required you to change the characters, uh, change the, uh, the landscape, the political situation. It just didn't quite work. And so she went ahead and did what I told her to do, which was to go ahead and self-publish the book. About a year later, she came back and thanked me and said, you know, I self-published that book. I've been making about four to $5,000 a month ever since on it. And, uh, and it ended up making me a lot more money that way than if I had taken it to a, a regular publisher. So the first thing you've got to consider is, okay, um, what are my alternatives? Do I take it to another publisher? Do I go ahead and uh, self-publish? That kind of thing. But let's go a little bit deeper because I think when you get requests for editorial uh, changes, a lot of times those changes are good. And you have to look at them and say, okay, rather dispassionately, um, is this a good change? If it is, I'd be inclined to say, okay, anything to make my book better. Is it something, on the other hand, that is just doesn't matter, okay? If it's, if it's like six of one or half dozen of the other to you, if they want you to change a character from, um, from being a 12-year-old uh, boy to a 12-year-old girl and it just happens to be a sidekick, why not, okay? I look at it and say, with a minor change, I'm going to get a sale. It makes sense. Um, on the other hand, if there is something that really does rankle you, something that you look at and you say, artistically, this just doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't understand why the editor is doing it. There are editors who sometimes will ask for things that um, they really probably shouldn't. And if that's the case, then you either have two options. You can go ahead and make the changes and, and do it, or you can go ahead and go to another publisher. And that other publisher might be another publisher in, in the same genre. Uh, you can try shopping it around a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I'd say the thing that I'd probably do first is I'd talk to the editor and say, I don't, this doesn't seem to make sense to me. I, I you know, artistically, uh, logically, uh, why am I doing this? You know, that kind of thing. It may be that the editor will change his or her mind. Okay, so you, you want to go ahead and talk to them about it first, negotiate. Then, if you feel like you need to, go ahead and find another publisher. That publisher may be another uh traditional publisher, or it could be that you want to go indie with the book. And uh, it used to be that there was a lot of stigma on going indie, but the truth is is that nowadays a lot of great books are coming out from indie authors, and it's, it's well established. And in certain genres, you don't really want a publisher, okay? If you're publishing a self-help book, for example, um, and there's a limited audience for it, you may not want a publisher at all. You might want to just go ahead and do it. If you're publishing romance, you know, I don't know that I would want a major publisher. So go ahead and take a look at your genre, take a look at your wants, your needs, and then make the decision based upon that. This is Dave Farland with Super Writers Tuesday. Happy writing!